What's up, what's happening everybody at Shady Sports Network? My name is Justin Arth, uh, current NFL, CFL, USFL, XFL, uh, free agent quarterback, uh, recently played with the Tucson Sugar Skulls. I'm here to break down some of the uh, quarterback play, or all the quarterback play rather, uh, for the USFL championship game that happened this past weekend. Um, f first thoughts, um, I think all four quarterbacks overall played well, um, but a lot of it is going to be subject to interpretation. Uh, but me, as a professional quarterback myself, um, I wanted to go ahead and, uh, for Sam, break down everything. Uh, to the best of my ability, uh, in the limited amount of time that I've got to do it, uh, but wanted to break everything down so you guys understand more from a professional quarterback's point of view, who was good, who was bad, um, and why the game happened the way that it did. Uh, but also wanted to plug my social medias and all that. Um, obviously, with me being a professional quarterback, I've got social medias, and uh, with me trying to get in and stay into the NFL, definitely need all the support possible. So go drop me a follow on Instagram, jarthqb11, on Twitter, justinarthqb, on YouTube, justinarth. You, I do some YouTube videos. I'm behind on some editing, uh, but we'll get there. Uh, but then also I've got um, a11performance.com. Got my own personal brand website there that you can find all things quarterbacking um, and other things that are coming soon to the website. Uh, but then you can also find me on my Facebook page, uh, a professional athlete page, Justin Arth. Um, and go support the journey. Uh, we're very close to making it in, into the NFL. Uh, was hoping to be in the USFL this year, but things just hadn't worked out just yet. So just kind of scratching and clawing uh, my way to get there. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the game. Um, and I'm gonna make it very quick, very short, and only talk about a couple plays. Um, I've got the extended highlights pulled up here on my phone just so I can look at it as I'm talking to y'all. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about the quarterback play. And first, I wanted to talk about the Birmingham Stallions, the, the champion Birmingham Stallions. Um, I, I think overall, uh, the Stallions did really well in terms of quarterback play. I mean, I think uh, Jamar Smith uh, had, did an amazing job with extending plays, especially in that first half um, and making something out of nothing. Uh, there were plays in particular like uh, that that big third down conversion where he's flushed to his right and threw a pass on the run and made a diving and the receiver made like a diving over the shoulder type catch. Um, I think that's just a, a glimpse of what Jamar Smith can do. Um, and he's an amazing athlete. Uh, but the way that zone reads and stuff were called, uh, and he did a great job at reading those zone reads, he didn't really take off and run that much. Uh, it was kind of more of a Russell Wilson-esque style play where he was using his legs to move around um, and and figure out throwing lanes uh, to get his receivers a chance with the ball, which I think is massive improvement uh, out of Jamar Smith from the little bit that I've watched the USFL this year. Um, but the one knock I do have on Jamar, which affected him in the second half and obviously took a touchdown away early, was every time he misses, he misses high. Uh, he's a guy that wants to rip it catch, set, rip it, um, and he's got an extremely strong arm, but with quarterbacks like that, accuracy can sometimes be an issue. And with Jamar, unfortunately, missed a touchdown and missed some other throws uh, because he misses high. That's where he tends to miss. But again, if you're gonna miss high, it's incomplete rather than missing low or short and that be an interception. Uh, but then we move on to Alex Magoo. Uh, he came in uh, because of the injury, and I thought he did really well. Um, I mean, 7 of 10, 77 yards, a touchdown, an interception, um, and four carries. Um, I mean, I, I think he did everything that Stallions fans would want him to do, especially in deleting that comeback with the help of the, the Stars kind of collapsing a bit after their amazing comeback in uh, the beginning of the second half. But I do want to talk about the star of the show, Case Cookus, um, and let, let Cookus cook. Uh, so... If we, talk, if we talk about him, uh, I want to go ahead and pull up some plays um, in the first half. I mean, C Case Cookus, uh, rip, that touchdown to that would have tied the game if the kicker wouldn't have mixed, missed the extra point. They're sitting in man coverage, nice little uh, one-two, uh, shuffle-shuffle, hitch and go uh, by uh, the receiver on the outside. Perfect throw uh, into the back pylon, right into the bucket. Um, of the receiver number two, but that's that's a, that's a perfect ball. 
Um, but if you really look at uh, and that was in the second quarter. But if you look at what, uh, what Case was doing in the first half, uh, Philadelphia really got behind the downs. Um, and so what we talk about in terms of getting behind the downs is on first down, we call a pass. Uh, it's incomplete. Now it's second and 10 instead of um, a nice little short completion to get us a second and six or, or things like that. Being a little too greedy. And I, I feel like Case uh, can definitely work on that. Uh, but at this point, we're just splitting hairs, especially with how well that he had he did perform. But in the first half, um, he did a really good job of getting the ball to playmakers in space. Uh, but he needed to be bigger on your third and your fourth downs um, to keep drives alive and keep them moving. And the reasoning for that was I was seeing some some issues deciphering blitzes and knowing where your hots are. Um, so Case can obviously see that there's six guys bringing pressure, um, but what he wasn't able to do was he wasn't able to adjust the running back or wasn't able to adjust the play to get receivers into quicker, shorter routes to where he could catch that throw, get that ball out uh, to a receiver in open space, and then fight for the yardage for the first down or run right to the sticks and you've got a first down on a nice, easy catch uh, when uh, the defense is pinning, pinning their ears back and bringing six or seven. Uh, but I think overall uh, that's where Case kind of struggled in the first half, but he got a lot better in the second half, and that is the reason why they came back. Um, and, and it was more just because of how, how well Case was playing. So Case was in rhythm. He was getting the ball to playmakers in space, and he started being greedy when the defense would allow him to be greedy, as opposed to being greedy early on just to take shots. Um, so... Case uh, did an outstanding job in the game. Unfortunate that the injury occurred, which took him out of the game, um, which led to KJ Costello coming in. Um, and, but I, I still think it's a championship performance. Um, I wish him the speediest of recoveries. Uh, I mean, two touchdowns to Jordan Sewell um, in the game, um, or maybe even three. Uh, it's kind of forgetting my memory here, but the play that he made in the third quarter, running around uh, for over five seconds and diving into the back of the end zone to throw one to Jordan Sewell, uh, that's an outstanding play moving his feet around. Um, and then as well as then in the fourth quarter, the nice little touchdown uh, on the glance route uh, to number seven, uh, Dev, uh, Devin Gray. I mean, that that's a nice in rhythm throw, three-step drop, hitch up, fire them right there and then and then big big plays here on uh third down or on that uh two-point conversion in the fourth quarter to go up by three uh, i think case had an outstanding game um it's just unfortunate that he had the injury but uh but we look at alex magoo um i think he played extremely well too through a beautiful back shoulder fade for the stallions uh to get him back on top and, and kept everything in rhythm but uh now i want to talk about the the hot topic of everybody, uh, that being KJ Costello, um, and so everyone wants to talk about everyone wants to talk about that last interception. Uh, Sam and I have kind of had some conversations uh, over Twitter about the same thing about where could have been some receivers open in the flats uh, down at the bottom of the field. I'll talk about that one in a second, but I do want to talk about the first interception. So I, I've got the film pulled up now. Uh, right it, from what I can see. Uh, they're bringing six. Uh, yes, yeah, they're, bring, they're bringing six. And so you've, you've got to be able to find your hot here, which was something that Case struggled with as well, uh, which could be Birmingham, uh, could be Philadelphia Stars coaching. But they bring the corner on the outside. Um, I mean, and you've, the running back or the left tackle's got to make that call, um, saying that that corner's coming. Um, and, well, the corner comes... Running back does pick it up, and that's all good. And they're sitting, playing what we call one hole. Uh, so you've got the linebacker just kind of sitting in coverage, um, and then uh, you've got a rover that's kind of sitting around playing that one coverage, uh, that one kind of uh, cloud coverage, but more kind of more has this kind of uh, cloud coverage where he could just kind of move around and do what he wants. Um, but pressure from the right side gets KJ to gets KJ 
uh, in a situation where he's feeling like he's got to throw his hot, which is this drag coming across the field, he's trying to make it. He's trying to make this throw here without getting his ankle eye set or without even stepping up in the pocket. If if I look here at the three minute one second mark, uh, right as that pressure is getting to him, he's got enough room to step up in the pocket, protect that football, step up and get around, and then get his ankle eye set to hit that receiver on that one yard drag route and then allows him to run and get five or six and that's on first down. So you get five or six on first down, we're sitting second and five, second and four, and, and we're sitting really good, sitting really pretty. But uh, KJ decides, hey, I gotta get this ball out, which I've been in situations like that too. He didn't make a bad read. Um, he got the ball to the receiver that needed or he chose the right receiver to get the ball to, um, but because his ankle eye wasn't set, he threw directly behind the receiver and directly into the receiver's ch or the the linebacker's chest that was haunting him in coverage and pick six. Um, I mean, in reality, that's the interception I look at that set that gave Birmingham one momentum, but two uh, is probably KJ's worst play of the game. Uh, when I when I look at that big balls throw that he threw, taking a shot, floating one up into the back corner or in the back middle of the end zone um, to, for the catch for the touchdown to get to get it within three again, um, that that's an amazing play. They brought the blitz, knows he's going to take a shot. They're playing cover zero, and made an outstanding play over the top to Roland. But since everybody wants to talk about it. Uh, we can definitely talk about this last interception, um, but I think what got what put the Stars in an even worse situation was this fourth and 12 uh, with a minute 43 left. Uh, you, you're going empty. Uh, you can see that they are going to be playing a version of cover one or cover three based on defensive alignment. Yep, so they'll end up playing cover three. Number 25 here comes untouched. Um, from the defense and it's taken a second for me to get back to it because again I'm using YouTube guys so but 25 uh, comes comes on uh, the pressure again from from the outside the right tackle doesn't call it uh, but this but KJ's got to know that that's coming because that safety was stacked on top of them and that's a tell that a corner is gonna blitz if you've got a safety stacked right on top of a corner so this this cornerback Number 20, 26, excuse me, uh, comes straight on a blitz, coming straight down KJ's throat. KJ sees it, throws it into the middle of the field, uh, which is dangerous in itself, but he throws it behind. It's off time, off rhythm, um, and floats one up there, and he's lucky that it's not intercepted uh, and that it's dropped for an incomplete pass. Um, but it, it's got to start with blitz recognition and being able to put your team in the best case scenario. Um, so I, I think that's two bad plays from KJ uh, and everything else I think is something that you can live with. And I think he actually played fairly well. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about this very last, uh, this very last interception. So we've got essentially two deep, two deep ins and two outs called. Uh, KJ gets flushed. It starts moving around, and at this point, you've got 22 seconds left in the game. Uh, you've got no timeouts, and you're you're down by three. So yes, you can you can go take the flat route. Uh, in in my in my case, uh, I'm probably taking pre-snap. And yes, we could talk about in hindsight, but in pre-snap, I'm prob uh, I'm looking at that receiver in the. And I'm looking at that receiver side to the right because we both got an in cut from the outside and an, and an arrow route or an out route um, or speed out, whatever you want to call it, uh, to the right side here. And, uh, but you've also got numbers and leverage. If you look over to the, to the left-hand side when you're looking at the play yourself, you, you've got, got a linebacker, a safety, and two corners. You've got four over two. And then you've got three but uh, three over two on the right side if you're looking from an offensive strength side. So you sit here and the safety is over 15 yards back so you know in this type of concept he's not going to be involved in the play where you've got an in cut and a speed cut out. Um, 
And so they're running right at the markers. And the thing is, KJ even looks to the right side. That ball's got to be out to that. That ball's got to be out now to that flat, to that flat route on the right side. You catch it, get a first down, and you move forward. But I do understand that KJ gets then pressure and gets thrown off his spot. But the pressure when the ball needs to be out isn't there enough for him to be able to get off that route and move. So, in my opinion, ball's got to be out to the right-hand side flat, and Sam, you're right, uh, there is one flat open. But let's just say that pressure gets there and he didn't see him because of where the pressure is and you get flushed. That's one mistake. So then KJ starts moving around and clock's already ticking. You've got 22 seconds left. I have no issue with him throwing the ball downfield the way that he did. He's just got to be able to deliver a better ball. Um, you're, I mean, with that particular play call, uh, you're not in a great situation anyway if you've got to make something with your feet. Um, it didn't look like he, uh, he even had room to even run because one of the corners comes straight at him. Uh, so it kind of puts him in a bad situation, but he kind of put himself in a bad situation with not being able to identify and throw that out very early on um, in the play. So I, I do think overall, quarterback play was very good uh, in the U in the USFL championship game. Overall season, I feel like uh, there's been some guys that have extended and built stock for themselves, but others that uh, weren't very good as well. And, and that's where I say, hey, USFL, you should have gave me a shot. But, uh, but no, uh, I, I do think uh, quarterback play in this game was really good. Uh, of the four, KJ obviously played the worst. But again, it's only three bad plays, um, and two of them are game uh, game altering, or th all three are game altering plays, but two of them are, are game altering interceptions, with one being a game altering turnover. So I think uh, for KJ, he's just got to play better and smarter on big downs, like your fourth downs, um, on and plays that you need to be able to make a play with a short amount of time, the two minute drill type plays. Um, but Case was definitely the star of the show, and I think Birmingham, uh, both quarterbacks, did what they had to do, and they deserve to be champions. Uh, so with that being said, that's your boy Justin Arth here. Uh, make sure you, you follow me on all the socials that I plugged earlier, uh, and then uh, definitely keep an eye on my journey because we, we're talking to some teams, um, and we're going to make something happen uh, with, with my guys over at Tom House Sports and Tom House specifically. Uh, but then everything that I'm doing business-wise as well. So uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, God bless you, and have a good day.